For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Even though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be the ruler over all Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel. You came as a baby, as it was foretold. You laid in a stable, our prince of. This innocent young child Giving hope to the lost The people walking in darkness have seen a great light And on those living in the land of deep darkness A light has dawned Hello and welcome to the Bee Church Carol Service. 
thanks for joining us. Uh, we're disappointed that we can't welcome you to where we usually meet at Bolton Meadow Academy, but we're so glad you've joined us online for our first online carol service. Like everything this year, things are going to be a little different, but we still can get together to enjoy these carols, uh, to read accounts from that first Christmas and to reflect on them together. At this point, if we were in the building, I'd be telling you where the toilets and fire exits are, but I'm sure you know where they are in your own home, so we can crack on. And let's do so with our first readings from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end, on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it, uphold it with justice, with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let's sing our first carol. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus.
Lord God. We praise you that when the time was right, you sent your son Jesus to be born as a baby in Bethlehem. We give you glory today because of your faithfulness, that the hoped-for Saviour, the Saviour that you promised to send thousands of years earlier, was none other than God himself. The angels sing of your holiness, and we know that without a Saviour we have no real hope in the darkness of this life or for the future. Thank you that he made himself nothing, being born in the likeness of man, so he could live a perfect life, a life we know we could never live. Thank you for his obedience that ultimately would take him to the cross where he would die, taking the punishment for our sin. Thank you that you not only raised him from the dead, but exalted him and gave him the name Lord, the name above every name, and that at his name every knee will bow and tongue confess to the glory of your holy name. We ask, Lord, that you would show us how we can know this hope ourselves. As we sing and celebrate this Christmas, I pray we would remember that Jesus was not just a baby in a manger, but that he can be our saviour too. Amen. He's just a baby. Ten fingers, ten toes, two eyes, two ears, one mouth and one nose. He's just a baby, cries out for mum's arms as he lies in a manger in the innkeeper's barn. He's just a baby, yet the sky changed its form as a new star appeared when this baby was born. He's just a baby. Yet the hosts of heaven sang hallelujah to this baby, hallelujah, son of man. He's just a baby, yet drove a mad king wild, who stained the streets with innocence, looking for this child. Why? Because he's just a baby, yet will walk on the seas, feed thousands with nothing, and perform miracles with ease. He's just a baby, yet will carry out the law, live a life of perfection so man will fear no more. He's just a baby, yet will speak to every nation, every broken heart and lost soul, he will fight for their salvation. He's just a baby, yet when they call him man, they will shout for crucifixion and drive nails through his hands. He's just a baby, yet at his final breath, all creation will shake, mourning his death. He's just a baby, yet when he's laid in his grave, he will rise three days later, victorious to save. He is just a baby, when we look in his festive cot. But the truth is, he's not just a baby. He is the Almighty Son of God. The reading is Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. 
And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So how are you doing on your Christmas shopping this year? It's been harder for sure. Have you stayed online or ventured into the shops? However you've done it, we still love to give gifts to each other at this time of year. And it's great to give gifts throughout the year. Uh, I bought my wife, Hannah, a gift this summer. 
It was a pack of clothes pegs. Now, I know what you're thinking. She's a lucky lady. Uh, but before you judge me, it wasn't for a birthday or anniversary. I bought her a pack of clothes pegs because she had moaned about the quality of the clothes pegs in our house. So I bought her these clothes pegs. It was a great gift or an okay gift, but it came with an extraordinary promise. Because these clothes pegs were no ordinary clothes pegs. They were hurricane proof clothes pegs. So I gave her this gift and I was very happy with my purchase. Imagine that. What a promise. Clothes pegs that could survive a hurricane. Well, I was very happy, but then started to think about this extraordinary promise. And as I thought, the first thing I thought was that actually this promise was unnecessary. You see, we live in Buckingham. We don't live in Florida. We don't have hurricanes. We had a few strong winds at the start of the year, but nothing you'd class as a hurricane. And as I thought about this further, I thought to myself, even if I did live somewhere like Florida, and I did see on the news that there was a hurricane incoming, my first thought would not be the washing on the line. It wouldn't be quick children run outside and check that we're using the hurricane-proof clothes pegs. No, it would be quick children find safety. A wonderful promise, but it seems so unnecessary. But still, pretty impressive, surely. Clothes pegs that could survive a hurricane. But as I thought about my clothes pegs a bit more, I wondered if this extraordinary promise was too good to be true. The first thing that made me think that perhaps this promise was too good to be true was what it said on the back of the packet. It said these words, made in England. These clothes pegs I'd bought were made just up the road. I thought these clothes pegs had never seen a hurricane. How do they know if they work? But then I thought perhaps I'm being a bit sceptical here. Perhaps these clothes pegs are cutting edge technology. Perhaps these clothes pegs have been made by a group of top scientists. Perhaps they've been tested all across the world. But then I thought if that was the case, would it have been possible for me to purchase them for 99 pence in Poundland in Milton Keynes? You see, my clothes pegs had come with an extraordinary promise, but it was unnecessary, the promise. And it seems that it was just too good to be true. Well, today we have heard of another gift. And this gift comes with a far more extraordinary promise. The gift of a child foretold 400 years before he was born. And this gift comes with an extraordinary promise because this child is no ordinary child. We're told that this child is a saviour for all people. And then again, I began to think about this extraordinary promise. And what I thought this time was actually how necessary this promise is. The necessity of a saviour. The reading on Isaiah told us that the saviour had come into darkness. And perhaps this year, more than any other, we've seen the darkness in our world. For every good news story that we've seen in the media or on the news, good news stories like that of Captain Tom, we've seen another five stories of selfishness and sadness. For every good news picture we've seen of someone smiling leaving hospital, we've seen another five of families mourning sickness and death. For every story we hear about governments working together and coming through with plans, we read another five that cause anger and sadness. This year, maybe more than others, it's been easier to see the darkness in our world. But I, actually, Isaiah said right there, all those years ago, that the Saviour came into darkness. And what a necessity for a Saviour to come into darkness. 
But perhaps this year, while we've been able to see the darkness out in the world, it's always harder to see the darkness within. We put on a brave front. But actually, if people knew what went on in our hearts and our heads, if people knew what we were thinking and feeling, they would know that within there's darkness. Sadness and hurt, yes, but also selfishness. And the Saviour came into darkness. And perhaps this year you might have thought, if there is a God... And if this God is interested in me, then I am far away from him. And there's nothing I can do really about that. But that's why this promise is so necessary. That the Saviour came into darkness to bridge that gap between us and God. What a necessary promise. And as I continued to ponder this extraordinary promise, I thought of the second question of my clothes peg. Is this promise too good to be true? Is it too good to be true that someone from outside our world would come into this darkness? Is it too good to be true that someone would take on pain and suffering so I could be right with God? And the same factors which make me question the validity of the peg assure me of the promise of the Saviour. Because this Saviour is from heaven. The Bible tells me, behold, the virgin shall have a child and he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. My problem was against God and it's God himself who came to deal with it. But don't think of this as a bargain basement sale. Although the gift of the Saviour is free to all this Christmas, it cost him everything. You see, at Christmas we remember the babe in the manger. But at Easter we remember the man on the cross. That the Saviour went to the cross, not because of anything he had done wrong, but he was killed for the things that I had done wrong, for my sin, for my selfishness, put on him so that I could be forgiven and I could know peace with God. The angels told the shepherds that this was good news of great joy for all peoples, that unto them this day a saviour has been born who is Christ the Lord. What a gift, a gift with an extraordinary promise that is both necessary and wonderfully true. We're going to sing our final carol, but before we do, thanks again for joining us and celebrating with us today. If you'd love to think about what we've been talking about anymore, why not drop us a line through the website? We'd love to chat or we'd love to send you uh, a book to help you read and think more. And of course, keep an eye on the website. We're posting lots of content. We'll be here again Christmas morning with a carol and a thought uh, to help us focus on Jesus this Christmas morning. But thanks again for joining us. And it just leaves me to wish you a very happy Christmas from all at Bee Church. Let's sing together. <laughs>